In this video, we will take a look at all the different Dremel attachments you can get for your Dremel. An attachment is basically a power-up for your rotary tool. It gives it a new ability. And most commonly, you attach it to the treads on the front of the rotary tool, but with some exceptions. Not all Dremel or rotary tool models are compatible with all the attachments, but the main flagship models are, like the Dremel 3000, 4000, 8260 and similar. So I will leave a link to an attachment compatibility chart in the description below. And all the Amazon links to the different attachments if you wanna go and check them out. Let's get into the video and start looking at some attachments. The flex shaft is the most useful attachment I own for the Dremel. It gives you the ability to use the more powerful and heavier Dremel models without having to hold their weight. The flex shaft enables you to work longer and makes it easier to do more detailed work without sacrificing any power. When you use the flex shaft, you connect it to the Dremel motor, then you can hang the motor up on something like a nail, and now you only need to hold the flex shaft extension. The flex shaft is also great for doing cuts that involves water, like when you want to cut rocks, since the motor and electrics are now away from the cutting action. One thing to note is that most other attachments cannot be used at the same time as the flex shaft. The workstation 220 transforms your Dremel into a mini drill press. So if you want to drill a lot of tiny holes, this attachment will be a good investment for you. The largest drill bit a Dremel can use is the 1/8 inch drill bit. The smallest drill bit that I have that I can use is the 0.8 millimeter drill bit. It is a good idea to use the keyless checker so you don't have to worry about changing collets whenever you want to change the drill bits. There is a little bit of slack or play when you initiate the drilling with the workstation. This can make it harder to be 100% accurate when drilling, but you kind of get used to it. It is a good idea to mount the drill press onto a piece of wood. This makes it more stable and gives you the ability to hold it down with clamps. The workstation also has a hanger that you can hang your Dremel on when you're using the flex shaft. You can also turn the Dremel at 90 degrees if you want to work with the Dremel at a fixed position. This can be very useful when you are sanding or polishing, but I mostly use the workstation as a mini drill press. This set of drill bits that I have is actually for metal, but they also work fine for drilling into wood. The plunge router attachment 335 will make your Dremel into a mini plunge router. This attachment is great to use when you want to make profiles on the edges of wood or you want to make inlays. It can basically do the same as a normal plunge router, but just not as effective. The Dremel actually works surprisingly well as a woodworking router because of the high RPMs of the tool. But it is definitely best at doing shallow passes in wood since the tool does not have a lot of torque. The small sizes of the routing bits also limits how much wood you can remove at one time. You can set the plunge router to a fixed step so that you take away exactly the same amount of material in each pass. The plunge router also comes with a circle cutting guide and a straight edge guide that gives you the ability to do a wider range of cuts. The base of the plunge router is also transparent which gives you more control over your cuts. The right angle attachment changes the angle of the working head 90 degrees. This opens up a wide range of opportunities. It makes it a lot easier to accurately cut flat surfaces. When we are just using the Dremel, the size of the tool will be in the way. But with the right angle attachment, you get more control. You can drill holes in harder to reach, tighter spaces, or you can cut off nails where you otherwise could not reach with the Dremel. The build quality of this attachment feels solid, but it can be a little bit noisy and vibrate a little bit when you're using it. The cutting guide 565 is very similar in use to the Dremel plunge router, but it's a lot simpler. The cutting guide positions your bit perpendicular to a flat working surface, which affords you some new ways to use the Dremel. You can make simple inlays, but they have to be a lot smaller than with the plunge router because of the smaller size of the base. You can also route edge profiles, and I actually prefer using the cutting guide over the plunge router for edge profiles, because it is so small and easy to handle. You can also use a makeshift fence if you need to route straight lines. You can use the cutting guide as a guide to help you cut through materials like drywall or tin plywood sheets. When cutting with the cutting guide, we usually use the 562 tile cutting bit or the 561 multi-purpose cutting bit. A makeshift fence also helps there if you want to cut straight lines through materials. The depth of the bit can be set with this little screw on the side of the attachment. This is one of the attachment that I use the most for the Dremel and I think it is good value for the money. Before we get into the next attachment, I just want to say that I will make more detailed videos about each of these attachments in the future. 
because I cannot fit all the info into this type of video. So subscribe if you want to be notified when they are coming out. Alright, now on to the next attachment. The grout removal kit 568 is designed to remove tile grout. You might need to do this if you have some damaged tile that you need to replace or if you need to remove some of the old grout for regrouting. My grout removal kit included the 569 grout removal bit which has a small diameter for detailed grout removal. But other bits like the 570 or the 562 tile cutting bit can also be used with this attachment. The attachment has two plastic guides on the bottom that helps you to stay on track while you are cutting. Since I normally don't work with tiles, I cannot comment on how effective this attachment is at removing grout compared to other tools. But as you can see here, I was able to remove a fair bit of grout in about one minute. The Mini Saw 670 uses a serrated saw blade to transform your Dremel into something that resembles a mini circular saw. We attach it onto our Dremel with a grey collet nut. And it has a steel wire on the inside that drives the saw blade. When making a cut with a mini saw, I find it best to do a plunge cut onto the cut line. A good material to cut is a quarter inch plywood or smaller. This cut is done in quarter inch plywood. On the left side of the attachment, there is a plastic arrow that helps you stay on the cut line while you're cutting. And it helps you to cut more accurately. I have to say that it does a fairly good job at cutting through the plywood and it is not that hard to follow the cut line. But I don't know how good the durability of these saw blades are and how often you need to change them because I only got one saw blade with the attachment. The circle cutter and straight edge guide basically does what the name implies. It helps you cut circles and straight lines. To cut circles we need to drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole that the pin guy can sit in because it is quite big and we can't just push it down into the wood. We then screw the circle cutter onto the treads of the Dremel and find a proper bit to use. I just use one of the small routing bits that was included in the routing bit set. The smallest circle you can make with the circle cutter is about 3 cm in diameter and the largest circle you can make with the circle cutter is about 30 cm in diameter. With the straight edge guide of this attachment, you can easily cut in a straight line. One thing to note is that the edge that the guide is following has to be straight in the first place, or else it won't cut straight. Straight cutting is fairly simple. Just hold the guide firmly against the edge while you steadily perform the cut. I'm using the same bit here as I made the circles with. This is the 576 shaping platform. It is designed for shaping edges of wood and metal, but I mainly use it for wood. The shaping platform works best when you have a flat edge to put it up against when you are sanding the edge. For example, when sanding the edge of this half inch plywood. It is very good at following curves when you are sanding with it. But the biggest challenge is to keep even pressure with the sanding band throughout the edge. If you don't keep even pressure, you will get dips in the wood and the edge will look a little bit more rugged. The thickness of the edge of the wood should not be thicker than the length of the sanding drum. This way you can sand the entire edge with one pass and it gives a cleaner finish. The shaping platform can also make 45 degree bevels by resting the angle surface onto the wood. It is hard to get a completely clean bevel because you need to keep constant pressure like I explained before, but it does a fairly good job. When sanding with a Dremel it is a good idea to reduce the RPMs a little bit to prevent burn marks. A good range is about 15 to 20k RPMs. This is the detailer's grip a577 and I don't really like this attachment. I know many people do like it after using it for a little while but this is one of the attachments that I use the least. The grip attaches onto the treads in the front and it is supposed to help you to have more control over the tool, be more ergonomical and to help you do more detailed work. But for me it does the opposite. It makes the tool more bulky in the front and it is harder to control with one hand. You get a little bit more control when you're using two hands with one holding the Dremel and one holding the grip. But all in all, if you want an attachment to help you to be more detailed and to be more ergonomical, I would recommend using the Flexshaft 225 instead. This is one of the attachments that I actually do not own. And that is the Flexshaft Tool Holder 2222. The attachment is used for hanging your Dremel on while you're using the Flexshaft. But I do not really see the need for this as you can just hang a Dremel on a nail or a hook and that works perfectly well. But it might be useful for some of you. The advantage of the tool holder is that it attaches to your workbench with a clamp similar to this one. And you can also adjust the height. The Multivice 2500 is not strictly an attachment for the Dremel rotary tool. It is generally a good small vise that you can use for all types of jobs. It attaches to your bench with this clamp and then it is ready to use. You can loosen the shaft of the vise to turn it into any position you want. To attach a piece of wood to the vise, we press this button on the back to extend the gap. 
Place the piece of wood into the vise, then we close the gap and secure the workpiece by screwing this handle. The multivise is best for handling smaller work pieces and for doing lighter tasks. It can become a little bit shaky if you try to saw for example a piece of 2x2 lumber. But for any job you will do with the Dremel, it will do a perfectly good job. You can also attach the Dremel in a fixed position to the vise. With this apply holder and plastic nut, which can be very useful for example for sanding. I really like the versatility of this vise and that it's so quick to set up and remove. The dust blower 490 is a little bit different than the other attachments as it replaces the collet nut. The dust blower is used for removing dust while you are engraving for example wood. Dust can be an annoying problem when engraving because it will build up and reduce the visibility. It does a fairly good job at removing the dust. And you can also use this attachment with the flex shaft and all other Dremel models that has a collet nut. What I don't like about the dust blower is that it gets a little bit in the way. You cannot angle the Dremel as much or else the dust blower will touch the wood and leave a black mark. The chainsaw sharpening kit 1453 is designed to help you sharpen chainsaws more accurately. But since I do not have a chainsaw chain right now, I will just demonstrate on this bike chain. Chainsaw chains has teeth that cut at a specific angle. The most common is 30 degrees. This attachment shows you the angle that you are sharpening at. All you have to do is to keep the line on this attachment parallel with the chain while sharpening. The bits used for this are cylindrical grinding stones that are designed to fit the teeth of the chainsaw. I know many people use a Dremel to sharpen chainsaws, but many of them ditch the attachment and sharpens the blade with only the bit, which can be quicker. But really don't take any chainsaw sharpening advice from me. I don't know much about it, I just wanted to show you the attachment. You can also get sharpening guides for garden equipment, knives and general sharpening. This set is called A67902. I thought it was included in the sharpening set I bought, but it wasn't. The Shield A550 is designed to contain sparks and reduce particles from flying all over when you're using the Dremel. It attaches to the front of the Dremel and you want to position it between you and the cutting bits. As you can see here, it does a fairly good job at containing the sparks while I'm cutting the bike chain with a metal cutting disc. But I do not really mind the sparks that much and the attachment makes the tool a little bit more bulky in the front. So I only use it when I really need to. The shield can also be good to use when you are using the wire brushes. Since these have a tendency to shed under pressure and you do not want metal wires flying at you at high speeds. The routing table 231 transforms your Dremel into a table router. To set it up I have secured the router attachment to a piece of straight pallet wood that I clamped onto my workbench. The initial setup and build of this attachment is not the best. Fastening the Dremel to the attachment is kind of clumsy and the depth adjustment seems way too hard to turn. You can change bits while the tool sits in the attachment if you can get in there with your wrench and fingers. But once you're set up, this is by far the quickest and easiest way to make edge profiles and writing straight lines with the Dremel. When making edge profiles, we can remove the fence since the bits have their own guides to follow. We adjust the depth of the bit, set the Dremel to a high RPM, and in a controlled manner, we pass the piece of wood along the bit from right to left. I suggest using the plastic guard, which is there to protect your fingers. I'm showing you without, so you can see better how it works. But be careful with your fingers while routing with this attachment. To make straight lines with the routing table, we can use the fence. We set the fence to our preferred position, depending on where we want the groove to be. Then we pass the piece of wood over the running routing bit while holding it up against the edge of the fence. I suggest doing shallow passes, since the bit has a tendency to wander or make tear outs in the wood if your passes are too deep. Even though this attachment is a little bit clunky for the setup, it really is useful and I will use it for many projects in the future. The light module LM1 gives you a little light in the front of the tool that you can use when you are working in low light conditions. It usually is included with the Dremel 4300, but mine came with the Dremel 8220. The light replaces the nose cap of the Dremel. And to activate the light, you press this button on the top. If you work in low light conditions, like cutting a nail in a tight space, or you have to remove some rust on the underside of your car, this can be very useful. This nose cap also has the easy twist function built into it. And that was all the different attachments that I could find or get my hands on. If there are any missing, please leave a comment below so we can all learn about it.